Hello, it is Foundation Friday, August 17th, 2018. Steve Cypress here with a very special guest for today's video. It is my beautiful wife, Michelle. You can say hello. You know? Hello. <laughs> they, they, they can hear you. All right, we're about to fire up the grill. Whoa. Hey, Toby Mercer's here. I'm about to drop the phone. We're about to fire up the grill. See, I'm doing the old trying to hold the uh, the ice pack behind the camera while I record so it doesn't overheat because it is just about 6 o'clock, a little after, and it is only about 105 degrees here in beautiful sunny Arizona. So uh, Alex is here. Great seeing you. And uh, a bunch of other people. And Lincoln is here. I can't see everybody. But let's get right to it, folks. Some lessons on how to sell more stuff. Okay, so my beautiful wife, Michelle, went to the Wisconsin State Fair and, oh wait, no, you told me it wasn't from the fair. Where was it from? The Oconomowoc Farmer's Market. The what the heck? Farmer's Market. So she went to some farmer's market up in Wisconsin, and she was all excited to come back with this beautiful custom mug that she had. Oh, you know, I was going to show them the rest of our stuff. So that's her favorite color, this cobalt blue. So she had this custom mug made up, and we have a whole set of the cobalt blue pitcher, and the glasses, bowls, and you were like, oh, the bowls, going to yep. go with everything. Right. You were all excited. So then you started to tell me, though, about this guy that was selling at the, wasn't the fair, what was the farmer's market? In Oconomowoc. In wherever it was right now. And he's, <laughs> he's selling this thing in the farmer's market. And, uh, and you started telling me about it. And I was like, oh, man, oh, that's a lesson. Oh, that's a lesson. I ought to talk about this on tomorrow's video. So now I don't remember, so why don't you start telling me the story, and then maybe I'll remember some of the lessons. So how did it work? Hi, everyone. It's Michelle. So my mom and dad and I from Wisconsin walked into the Oconomowoc Farmer's Market, and we were looking at actually to purchase tomatoes and zucchini. And so when we started walking down the aisle, we saw tomatoes, zucchinis, and vegetables. Vegetables. <laughs> we saw the pottery guy. I'm like, oh, he has blue pottery, which I love blue pottery. And um, he looked at me, and I looked at him, and I said, I like that mug. But it wasn't in blue. It was in, like, orange or something. He said, well, I can custom it for you. I said, oh. I said, okay, how about a vegetable platter? He goes, well, I don't have any of those. So first of all, <laughs> he didn't have the right color you wanted. Correct. But you said, I would love it in this cobalt blue. So he was very smart, and he said, I will make it for you. And then I asked, like, that meant you had to, like, go away and come back, right? Because it takes a while to, like, they, he's got to throw it and spin it around and yes. put the handle on it. Yes. And then he's got to put it in the kiln and paint it and fire it all up. And, and you came back and you had your custom mug. Yes. And then, since she's at the farmer's market, now you would think, you're at the farmer's market, every vegetable on earth is there. You're getting all these vegetables, and you're like, you know what I would really like? Because, as you just heard, we got the bowls and the... <laughs> The pitcher and the glasses and the this and the bowl, whatever, we got everything, but I guess we don't have a vegetable platter in cold Serve, blue. Serving tray. A serving tray. So my beautiful wife, <laughs> Michelle, is the hostess with the mostest. As anyone that's been to any of my events, Michelle, you know, I always made the joke, if it was up to me and I was running the event, everybody would be eating like a, a, a day-old sandwich on a paper plate. In but my, <laughs> my beautiful wife, Michelle, has to like put everything out first class and go crazy and everything is outrageous. So... She wants to have this custom-made cobalt blue vegetable platter, and the guy couldn't make it. Well, wouldn't he, make it. Didn't make. What's? He wasn't equipped. <laughs> wasn't equipped. What does that mean? That means that he only brought mugs for the farmers. He didn't think anyone else would want anything else. See, so first mistake. There's a first lesson. He said, you know, I didn't think anyone would want anything else. Translation is, I didn't really want to sell a lot of stuff. Oh, I, that was another excuse he gave you. I remember now. He said, I can't, you know, bring everything here. Correct. We're not asking you to bring everything, guy. Sample. But how about <laughs> if you're at a farmer's market where people are getting vegetables, you might have a vegetable tray. That's not too much of a stretch to think that I know you don't have everything. Like, did you even ask him, like, what's everything mean? What does he have? Did you say, do you ha can I get your catalog? Can I get on your mailing list? Did he get your email, your phone number, your mailing address? Well, he was yesing me after I said I want a cobalt blue. But did he get your mailing address, no. your email, your phone number, nothing, your text nothing, message, nothing, your nothing. Facebook account? See your, you next week. Does he even know who you are? <laughs> he can't ever get in touch with you. You want to buy everything he has. He said, I'll see you next Saturday. But he won't because <laughs> no. that was in Wisconsin. And next Saturday's tomorrow. And I have a feeling 
you're not going to go 1,800 miles to this farmer's market tomorrow we'll see you next day. just because the guy is going to have a platter. So he's going to show up tomorrow with this platter and go, where is that beautiful lady with the hat? Are you wearing the hat? I was. Oh, there you go. So where's that lady who wants to buy my stuff? Well, she's gone. So number one, if you don't have your assortment there, at least have a way. Say, here's my website where you can see all the stuff on it. Here's my mailing list. Let's get you on the mailing list. So this guy had a booth set up at the farmer's market. Did he? You would think he paid money for the booth. Yes. And he does what 90, uh, close to 100% of business owners do. They make sales, but they don't understand. This is what I call the tip of the iceberg theory. They're making that initial sale. That's the tip of the iceberg, the 10% of the iceberg, the money that you can see. But there's 90 more percent of the money you could get from every customer, client, member, patient, whatever it is in your business, that you just can't see. It's in the future. And you got to have a way to try and get that. And most business owners don't. They they have a transactional business. He made that first sale. He sold a mug. How much was the mug? Oh. Oh, that was another lesson, right? Seventeen ninety-seven. So his price was seventeen ninety-seven, which I like. I was like, you know, that's smart. And we've talked about pricing strategies and having the sevens in there psychologically. Seven sounds like nothing. Where nine people round it up, and it sounds like a lot. But what happened was you gave it, I thought you said it was 15. I think you're right. 15, 15 seven, whatever 15 it was. Dollars. You hand him a 20. Right. And what did the guy do? Oh, he said, let me give you change. I said, let me give you change. I said, absolutely not. I'm going to give you $20. <laughs> he made a custom mug Keep for a lousy change. 15, 17 Keep bucks, whatever. Change. She pulls out a $20 bill, like, take the 20 bucks. Like, so. He said, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you a lot. But, but you wanted to give him hundreds more. We would have bought all You're kinds so of stuff sure. from this yeah. guy. Yeah. Like so a lot of lessons learned there okay toby's here going the extra mile you'll have loyal customers for sure but he's not only not going the extra mile and it's not even for the customers it's for himself he's not going even an extra inch he's not saying can i even can i get you know the extra inch would say can i just get your phone number no can i get your mailing address no. can i get your can, what's your name i'll like you on facebook and i'll say no. he will no. never see no. her again she'll no. never see him again see next saturday she she likes his stuff <laughs> She wants more stuff of his, and instead, I have a feeling that someday you'll come home with a cobalt blue vegetable platter that you got from somewhere, and it won't be from that guy. That's correct. And if that person is smart enough to also get any contact information at all, come on, folks, build any kind of a list so that you can continue to sell over and over and over and refer you to other stuff and say, if I don't have it, I can get it, and he'll get a referral fee from sending you notices of other things, or, hey, I'm going to be at these fairs next month. Come see me. Right. Here's a special coupon. If you come to my booth, I'll give you a something and a whatever. Like, so if you've heard the saying, the money is in the follow-up. Well, but this guy is thinking transactionally, and that's a big mistake, so don't do that. Okay. Even if you have a booth and it's you think it's one time, which... Now, I guess it's the opposite. He thought automatically these are regular visitors because probably a lot of the visitors to the local town's farmer's market come every Saturday. That's correct. And so he's, oh, we'll see you next yes, Saturday. But next no, week. you won't. See you next week. <laughs> what if the person lives 1,800 miles away in beautiful, sunny Arizona where for some reason there's no storm tonight? <laughs> for the first time in a That's while, we don't have the monsoon <laughs> coming in. But what we do have soon coming in is the barbecue, which we are firing up. And we got the burgers and the corn and the whatever. They're fake burgers, of course, but there are all kinds of stuff going on in that grill. It's very exciting. So I don't see any questions, comments, concerns. Michael's here. Good seeing you. Any, uh, this ever happened to you? Did it ever happen to, on which, uh, either as a buyer or a seller? Well, you don't want it to happen on either end. So do your customers a favor and let them buy more stuff from you. Make it easy. Don't make it difficult, like when they go or say just I'll see you next week. How about I'll see you next week? And before then, you can go to my yeah, website. Email. You can get an email, a text yeah. message, a phone number, phone something number. in the mail. <laughs> you know, anything at all. Never see him again. So, was there any? What else? Was there any other lessons? I probably cut you off there, and I said we got to put this in the video. I wish you would have called me because I want more. Well, that was the yeah, that was the <laughs> lesson. You see, she's still, still. You see, this is your customers. So you're watching. Your customers want to give you money, and they want to buy from. This is assuming, which I assume if you're watching this video, that a you're a business owner, right? You're not one of the lazy, selfish, cowardly 83, 87 percent of Americans that are too afraid to own their own business or too selfish or whatever it is. 
I'm talking to the business owners, and I'm assuming that you have an excellent product or service, which means people that buy from you once want to buy from you over and over again. Why make it so difficult if not, like in this case, impossible? Big mistake. That's the foundational tip. Make it easy for people to buy from you over and over again. And Toby says, we developed the annual sewer cleaning list. I almost said sewer cleaning list, but then I knew Toby has nothing to do with sewing, but he has a lot to do with sewers. So yeah, of course, make it easy with that maintenance program, that annual checkup thing, the something, or, but I'm sure, Toby, you also get your contact information of everybody you go see, because it takes a lot of effort. Do I have to tell you how much time, money, effort it takes to get a new customer? And then if all you get is you sell them one little lousy mug, not lousy, it's a nice mug, you sell them a nice mug, and then you don't get any more money. So all that 90%, she, she gave him 20 bucks, is probably 200 more or $180 more that he can't see in the future. That's the below the surface part of the iceberg that he's never going to get because he completely failed in the foundational tip of make it easy for people to buy from you over and over and over. Absolutely, get their, con their contact information and keep in touch with them and help them to buy more of your stuff. Anything else? That's it. All right, we got to have dinner. That's it for Foundation Friday. Thanks to everyone being here today. Thanks for all the questions, comments, likes, loves, shares, everything else. Thank you, Toby, and everybody else for being here live, watching on the replay. We will catch you, or I will catch you again tomorrow on Success Story Saturday. I will see you then. Bye-bye.